Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach, and it is Monday, so it is meal prep day. I have an easy but really delicious meal prep for you. We have breakfast, lunch, and a dessert. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not because I do a meal prep every Monday and I do upload five videos every single week. Don't forget to check out the description box down below where you will find my recipe website. All of today's recipes, including all of the other recipes, hundreds of them that I've created here on my channel are on my recipe website. You'll also find nutrition coaching where I offer personalized to you macros and calories. Highly recommend this is how I've lost over 140 pounds as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching for accountability or if you would like to chat with me directly. Links, discounts to my favorite things and of course my Facebook group. Come join us there. We'd love to have you are all down in that description box. So let's head on into the kitchen for this week's meal prep. breakfast this week, I'm making protein banana bread. I'm actually really excited about this. I've been craving banana bread and actually Troy's pretty excited about this too. So we're just going to put a spin on traditional banana bread with added protein. So let me show you what you'll need. So you'll need some flour. I'm going to use the Kodiak power flour. Unfortunately, this protein flour is discontinued. Lucky for me, one of my lovely subscribers sent me a whole bunch. So I've just been keeping it in the freezer and using it up. Now you can use regular flour. You can also add unsweetened protein powder to regular flour to make your own protein flour. I will link down below my favorite unsweetened protein powder and the directions on how to create your own protein flour. Flour, but remember you can just do regular flour as well and then you're going to need some vanilla protein powder I have been loving the motivate vanilla protein in general but especially for baking I find that it doesn't create any weird protein aftertaste so it's typically lately it's been my go-to vanilla protein in general I love motivate everything you guys know I use a lot of their products. So I'm going to use the Motivate Vanilla and I will link Motivate down below for you with 20% off, highly, highly recommend. And then I have some Lakanto granulated. I also have a 15% discount for Lakanto, so I'll put that down below for you. Unsweetened applesauce, eggs, salt, baking powder, and cornstarch. I know I'm also going to get some questions on my little salt and pepper container. This is right off of Amazon, so I'll link it as well. I also forgot to mention, you'll need bananas for banana bread. So the recipe calls for three small bananas. Mine are pretty good size, so I'm gonna use two. The riper, the better. So to put together our banana bread, we're going to add two and a half cups of flour, half of a cup of protein powder, which was two scoops of the Motivate, a teaspoon of baking powder, and a teaspoon of cornstarch, and about a half of a teaspoon of salt, and then go ahead and mix all of that together. Add in a half of a cup of Lakanto granulated. And again, give it another stir, this time making sure all of your dry ingredients are fully incorporated. Now we're going to crack in two eggs. three quarters of a cup of unsweetened applesauce, then our banana. So like what I like to do is kind of squish it in the actual banana peel before I add it into the mix. And then I kind of mash it up a little bit more as I stir it in with the rest of my ingredients. Here is our protein banana bread mixture. We're going to add that to our greased loaf pan. I have my oven preheating to 325 degrees. And here is our banana bread going into a 325 degree oven until it is cooked through. We're probably looking at about 35 to 45 minutes. The banana bread is out of the oven. I will tell you it smells super good. I am going to let it cool for a little while, then we'll cut it into slices. I'm actually going to have this as part of my breakfast this morning, so I'll be able to give you a real time taste test and let you know how it is. 
So I sliced up half of the loaf of bread. We're actually going to slice it into 12 slices. Here is the size of the slice. So it is a good size. I did add a little bit of Kerrygold butter, about a teaspoon, and I'm going to have this with some yogurt for breakfast, but I'll go ahead and put points, calories, macros here on the screen for each slice. And of course, I'll let you know how this was. For lunch this week, I'm making chicken orzo soup. I'm so excited for this. I have been on a mission for soup. Ever since I had plastic surgery and had soup in the recovery house, I've been loving soup. Last week we made chili, and this week we're making one of my favorite soups, chicken orzo. So let me show you what you'll need. First, you're going to need garlic, light butter, heavy cream, lots of chicken broth. You need about six cups. So I bought two boxes of the Kettle and Fire chicken broth, orzo pasta, cornstarch, lemon juice, Italian seasoning, salt and pepper, an onion, celery, chicken of your choice. This is that smoked pulled chicken from Sam's Club. I'm going to use it since I have it and I need to use it up, but you can use any chicken. And then the recipe also calls for a couple of carrots, but I'm out. I used all my carrots in a pot roast. So we're gonna skip the carrots in the recipe, but it is part of the original recipe. So to make this soup, I have my caraway Dutch oven. You know how much I love my caraway Dutch oven. I will link caraway down below for you. I've added two tablespoons of light butter. I'm going to add half of a chopped up onion and some celery. And we're going to let that cook down until the onion and the celery are soft. I'm going to add in some salt. a big scoop of minced garlic, and some Italian seasoning. And I'm going to let that cook a bit more just until the garlic becomes fragrant. Then I'm going to add in my chicken, six cups of chicken broth, which is basically one and a half containers, and then one cup of orzo pasta. We're going to let this come to a boil and allow it to simmer while we cook that pasta. So the orzo is cooked through. This looks so good. I went ahead and mixed a quarter cup of heavy whipping cream with a tablespoon of cornstarch. I'm going to add that to the pot. And that's going to make my soup nice and creamy and thicken it up a little bit. Go ahead and turn off the heat. And then I'm going to add a couple tablespoons or more to taste of lemon juice. And then stir that in and our soup is done. Look at how good this looks. I mean, it's packed with chicken. We have the pasta. The only thing I'm missing, unfortunately, is the carrots, but you can definitely add that in when you make this soup, but this looks so good. I will go ahead and put serving size, points, calories, macros here on the screen for you. I cannot wait to have this all week. For dessert this week, I'm making a no-bake chocolate pretzel bar. This is perfect as we move into hot months and you don't wanna turn on your stove or oven. This is a no-bake dessert, so let me show you what you'll need. First, you're going to need some pretzels. You can really use any pretzels. Coconut oil, Lily's chocolate chips, chopped pecans, sugar-free maple syrup, almond butter, peanut butter of your choice, salt, and some dates. So to make the chocolate pretzel bars, the first thing we're going to do is add one cup of chopped pecans to a food processor, or I'm using my Nutribullet. I have two cups of pretzels, so I'm going to add those in, pulse them down. It'll be kind of a chunky mixture. To that mixture, we're going to add a quarter cup of sugar-free maple syrup, seven pitted dates, and two tablespoons of our almond butter. A pinch of salt, and then we're going to pulse that again until fully combined. So here is what your mixture should look like. I'm going to grab out a pan and we'll press this in and get this in the refrigerator to set. So I just pulled our bars out of the freezer. I melted my 300 Lily's chocolate chips with half of a teaspoon of coconut oil. I'm going to pour this right over the top of my bars and spread it out nice and even. 
I'm going to sprinkle just a couple of crushed pretzels right on top. And then we're going to put our bars back in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. We want everything to set. So the no big chocolate pretzel bars are done. These look so incredibly delicious. I'm going to cut these into 16 bars, keep them in the refrigerator so they stay hardened, the chocolate stays hardened and the base. I will go ahead and put points, calories, macros here on the screen for you. Thank you for joining me for another weekly meal prep. I hope you are as excited about these three super easy yet really good recipes. And if you are, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not, turn your bell on because I do a meal prep every single Monday. Don't forget to check out the description box down below where you will find my recipe website, nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things, and my Facebook group. Don't forget to come and join us over there. Happy Monday, friends. Have an amazing week, and I'll see you in Wednesday's What I Eat in a Day. Bye.